gentlemen, and welcome to another edition of Does the Team Think? Well, now, ladies and gentlemen, we come to that moment in the program where we don't ask a member of the audience to put a question, but we ask our guest celebrity to come along and ask the team a question. And quite frankly, I am completely lost for words. How to introduce our guest celebrity, I do not know. All I can say is I'd like you now to meet a famous professor of basic English 25 though. Ladies and gentlemen, Stanley Unwin. Bravo. Welcome to the program, Stanley. <coughs> and um, without getting any tongue twisters, can we please hear your question? Yes. Um, what does the team think of the standard of public speaking in this country today? What does the team think of the standard of public speaking in this country today? <laughs> I think public speaking is quite... Um, Odd these days, they have ghost script writers, don't they? These public speakers, they don't write their own scripts. And there was one chap who was giving a public speech, and he came to a joke which he was supposed to have been his favourite joke, and we read it for the first time, and he thought it was so terribly funny that he roared his blooming head off, his glasses fell off, and he broke them, and he couldn't read the rest of the speech. <laughs> I was a member of a club, and uh, I got in, you know, into this club. It's a very exclusive club, and I don't really know how I got in, but I did get into this club. Through the window. <laughs> <laughs> I, I got into this club, and it was a very exclusive club, and there was one fellow, uh, you'll always find one, who was a very flamboyant type of person, to put it very nicely, always walking around, slapping people on the back, wanting to buy them drinks, and interfering into conversations. And uh, he was a very, uh, what shall I say, a very ill-bred sort of person. How long um, has Jimmy Edwards been a member of your club? <laughs> <laughs> and so they, somebody went to the secretary one day and said, I think you better have a word with this fellow quietly and put him in his place. So the secretary went to this chap and he said, look, old fellow, he said, I don't want to upset you, but the, one of two things you must do. He said, you must either stop wearing a monocle or give up saying you was. <laughs> <laughs> uh, the thing is that... Um, uh, I have found over the years that people either don't bother to express themselves very clearly or don't bother to listen to what you're saying. Listen to who's talking. <laughs> <laughs> well, I rang up a, a motor car firm one day and said, um, my motor car uh, would like a 500-mile service. Uh, what's it? He's always rushed out. He obviously wasn't interested in servicing. So then I said, um, what's the position in as much you can cope where the sales up Charlotte Street? <laughs> oh! Yes, we can cope at the sale. I'll put you through. <laughs> so then a voice came, Sale, Charlotte Street? Oh, Grimley Ford away here. Oh, yes, sir. <laughs> uh, I want to supersede the availability before a poor this sort came through. <laughs> <laughs> he said, oh, you'll have to wait two to three months. Uh, You've got, <laughs> you got the Mark III coming through now, you know. And, um, you know, it seems to show that people don't bother to listen. I mean, my trouble about past the day. <laughs> Professor, could I ask you a question, uh, talking about public speaking? Do you think that it's a waste of time for orators on the soapy boxes to hide the parkers on the cornfold? <laughs> I understood every word of that, but then I'm a Lonnie Donegan fan. <laughs> yes, well, um, that, uh, Mr. A, was uh, an excellent question, and um, <laughs> uh, is based on where the orator standing on his rostrum to reach in the eardrum of the people in the public. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, I think Mr. Fletcher also was right when he referred to his Lonington Donegold. Yes. <laughs> Donegold? Yes. Three, <laughs> three bags full. <laughs> if it but, takes two sticks of rhubarb to make a gooseberry fool, who killed Cock Robin? <laughs> <laughs> that is a very good reference, because if Cock Robin tasting rhubarb wine, which is made in the early morning, and got the bacteria lodged with the vinegar flayed. Where did this Wilson <laughs> <laughs> yes, You have just heard the news in garlic. <laughs> I don't want the professor to get a mess up on what they were talking about. <laughs> because yes. otherwise it trips it out with a talking through and the people goes a bold, you see. <laughs> <laughs> I'm beginning to like this. This is better than English. <laughs> Well, it's half past through in the early morning, and they're enjoying their most of sitting there, palms are dangly, all the way. <laughs> Was your party dangly, Jim? <laughs> What was your original question? A question. <laughs> well, the question, as it was formed in my brain box, and by that I mean the pigeonholes of the mime, and, uh, <laughs> came through the larynx <laughs> and the vowel sound, <laughs> uh, was this. Uh, uh, would the public speaking, which in the sitting of four illustrious Pete Lowe on this panel, for expressing most for the 
real tranquility of speakers convey the idea which is going on inside their brain box. I think Stanley Unwin ought to stand for Parliament because he makes more sense to me than any MP I've ever heard. <laughs> you must come from a very peculiar constituency. That's <laughs> right. uh, Mr. Edwards, uh, I'm rather please. lost here. Quiet the questioner is about to put one. Well, uh, a polo was a corollary to this because. Oh, <laughs> <laughs> You're from Bextad, you corollary, have you? Yes, sir. Definitely. <laughs> I was thinking if you were doing a polo most on your four leg stallion and dangly their way. Um, <laughs> <laughs> As you for lollop round and do a chucker through, and thereby a hangs attack. <laughs> Does uh, Mr. Jimmy Edwards find any difficulty with the asymmetry of the either side, which is very much yoke shaped, or his moustache either side for a balancing on the horse? Is there so any? Would you like to no. answer that? No. <laughs> That's it, Jim. Play safe. Play safe, Jim. Thankly, thankly, very much, Lee Van Lee Stanway. Thank you very much. <laughs>